I will tell you, I don't want to help fill almost any of the reasons I've heard you say. I'm really not interested in which companies survive as far as, I mean, the last car I made in my time was an Edsel, so, you know, didn't go over too well that time. And I'm not really worried about that. I'm worried about one thing, and that's a gentleman at the end. I'm worried about jobs, American jobs. And up until now, I really haven't heard any of the big three talk about jobs in America. Look, I'm all, of the, all for international stuff and all, I'm, I'm, I love all that stuff. But the truth is, if there aren't things being built in America, I'm not really terribly interested in helping. It is interesting to me that you're being criticized by the very people that we just gave $700 billion to. I, I kind of figure that's a little strange. Uh, you know, why don't they open up their wallets and help you out if they're so smart, if they're so caring about society? But I want to tell you very clearly, the people on Wall Street that we just gave the money to, I did it. I voted for it, hesitatingly, like most of us, because we all know we have a problem. We know we have a problem in the auto industry. And it's really not even the industry. Again, it's the jobs that you represent that I'm interested in. I understand that. I want to save those jobs. I'm not interested in a race to the bottom by taking wages away. And anybody who here has said today or any other day that the problem is that we pay our workers too much, well, then, you know, my answer is then why don't they individually leave the middle class? Because as far as I'm concerned, the auto industry was one of the leaders in creating the middle class by negotiating good wages. I'm not interested in a race to the bottom. I am very interested in my constituents who basically do not trust you. They really don't trust me all that much, but they really don't trust you. <laughs> and they don't trust you for lots of different reasons. I've only been here 10 years, and in that 10 years, all you did, the industry, and that includes the union as well, you fought me on cafe standards. You said, no, we can't do it, yet you just said, we need more fuel efficient vehicles, we want to sell them. Well, if you had listened to us, you would have had them. All you did was ask us for tax cuts for gas guzzlers. For all intents and purposes, you were giving away vehicles that got three miles a gallon because we stupidly, not this side, mostly the other side of the aisle, allowed tax incentives that gave away trucks for nothing. And you didn't say a word. You said, thank you, Shh, quiet, don't talk about it. You should have been here. I need some assurances. My constituents need some assurances that you're not going to just blow this again, that you really did get the message. And the truth is, all the things you've talked about today so far, what you cut, we're not sure we trust you. I'm not sure it really matters all that much. My fear is that you're going to take this money and continue the same stupid decisions you've made for 25 years. That may not be you. It may be your predecessors. I don't know who it is. I don't care. It's the industry. I want to want to buy an American-made vehicle again. I want that. I don't trust necessarily that you will provide that. I'm afraid we're going to do this. It'll be a short-term bailout, and you didn't get the message. Give us the cars that we want that other companies have been able to give us. If you can do that, maybe some people in the Senate will actually listen to you. I think over here you're probably going to people that want to help, but damn it, I don't want to help again and get it stuffed back in our ear at home that you took the money and you blew it. How can you reassure me, and more importantly, my constituents, that you won't do it again, that you really did, honest to God, this time you got the message? Go right ahead, any one of you, just jump right in. Well, <laughs> um, I, I personally... Um, I, could be, I couldn't be more aligned with you. I've, I've dedicated my uh, professional life uh, to fuel efficiency uh, in airplane design for 37 years. And the most uh, compelling thing to me when I was invited by Bill Ford and the Ford Motor Company to join Ford to help was a vision of sustainability and fuel efficiency and high quality cars based on safety to get people where they wanted to go safely and efficiently. And, and I also was attracted by um, an American icon and a global icon. And it's about America. It's about jobs in America. I can remember when we sat down in the negotiations with, with Ron and we can I can remember the day and we agreed that, that um, we were going to work together to do whatever it took to increase our competitiveness so that we could make cars of all sizes, 
small, medium, and large, the most fuel efficient, the highest quality, the safest vehicles, all sizes in the United States for, for the Americans. And the agreement that we did absolutely is going to deliver on that promise. And as we talked about earlier, we put that plan in place. We have now probably the best lineup of small and medium-sized vehicles to match our wonderful SUVs and, and trucks that we had before. But we have a, a terrific balanced portfolio. They're competitive with the best in the world, and we're doing it with the productivity to be competitive. So I am very, very positive about the future of the automobile industry. The fact that we're in the worst downturn that we've ever been in as far as the, the economy and the, and, the, uh, and the credit is something we're all dealing with. But when it comes to, to us having a vision of a viable and exciting and a sustainable automobile industry, I think you can look at our past performance and say that we're absolutely going to continue to deliver that vision. The hearing is now uh, ready to move on to the next phase. The witnesses are excused. And uh, we will call up the next panel. Let's move out quickly, please. Please. please.